Hello my friends, my name is Maria and I will now read you a story. So settle in and listen. The Emperor's New Suit Many years ago there was an emperor who was so immensely fond of new clothes that he spent all his money in order to be really well and smartly dressed. He did not care about his soldiers, nor for going to the theater or driving about in the public promenades, save to show a new suit. He had a coat for every hour of the day, and just as it is said of a king, he is with the cabinet, so it was always said here, the emperor is in his dressing room. The town in which he resided was a very happy one, and many strangers journeyed thither, and one day also two swindlers. They pretended that they were weavers, and said that they could weave the most beautiful cloths, and anyone could ever imagine. Not only were the colors and the designs something unusually pretty, but the cloths made from the same had also the remarkable peculiarity that they could not be seen by anybody who was incapable of his office or else was more than ordinarily stupid. That would be a fine suit indeed, thought the emperor. When I had that on, I should be able to discover whom in my empire are unfit for the offices they hold and be able to distinguish the clever from the stupid. I must have some of that cloth woven for me. And he gave the two swindlers a large sum of money on account in order that they should begin their work. They set up two looms and appeared as if they were working at something, yet the looms had nothing on them. The swindlers asked constantly for the finest silks and the most magnificent gold cloth, but the proceeds they put into their pockets and kept on working at the empty looms till far into the night. I would indeed like very much to see how far they have got on with the clothes, thought the emperor, but at the same time he was a little anxious in his mind at the thought that he who was stupid or unfit for his office could not see it. For his own part he thought he need not be afraid, but he would, however, send somebody to see it first. Every man in the town knew the peculiarity of the cloth, and each one wished to discover how stupid or incapable his neighbor was. I will send my old, honest minister to the weavers, thought the emperor. He will best be able to see what the cloth is like, for he has sense and nobody is better fitted for his office than he. The old honest minister went to the room where the two swindlers sat working at the empty looms. Heaven preserve me, thought the old minister, opening his eyes wide. Why, I cannot see anything, but he did not say so. The two swindlers invited him to come closer, asking him if it was not a lovely pattern and fine colors pointing to the empty loom. But the poor old minister continued to keep his eyes open and still could not see nothing, for there was nothing to see. Bless me, he thought, am I really a fool? I never thought so, and nobody must know it. Am I not fit for my office? No, it will never do to say I cannot see the cloth. 
But you say nothing, said one of the weavers. Oh, it is very pretty, exceptionally pretty, said the old minister, looking through his glasses. What a design and colors. I shall certainly not fail to tell the emperor that it pleases me very much. We are delighted to hear it, said both the weavers, describing the colors and the peculiar design. The old minister listened attentively in order to be able to say the same to the emperor when he returned, and he did so. The swindlers now asked for more money and more silk and gold, which they wanted for the stuff. It all went into their pockets, and not a single thread was put upon the looms, but they still continued to pretend to work. Shortly after, the emperor sent another honest official to see how the cloth progressed and whether it would soon be ready. It was exactly with him as with the minister. He looked and looked, but as there were only the empty looms, he could see nothing. Isn't it a handsome cloth? asked the two swindlers, pointing and explaining the pretty design, which did not exist at all. I am not a fool, thought the man. It must be my easy appointment I am not fit for. It is really strange, but I must not show it. And he praised the cloth, which he could not see, and assured them he was highly pleased with the pretty colors and the handsome design. It is indeed very fine, he said to the emperor. Everybody in the town was talking of the handsome cloth, and the emperor wished to see it himself while it was still on the loom. Accompanied by a number of excellent men, and among them the two old respectable officials who had been there before, he went to the cunning swindlers who were weaving with all their might, but without anything on the looms. Yes, isn't it splendid? said the two honest officials. May it please your majesty to look at the design in the colors. And they pointed to the empty looms, believing the others could see the cloth. What does this mean? thought the emperor. I can see nothing. It is really awful. Am I a fool? Am I not fit to be the emperor? It would be the most frightful thing that could happen. Oh, it is very handsome, he said. It has my most gracious approval. And he nodded approvingly and looked at the empty looms, for he would not say he could not see anything. The whole suite with him looked and looked, but not see anything more than the others. But they nevertheless said, like the emperor, oh, it is very handsome, advising him to wear the fine suit on the occasion of the great procession about to take place. It is magnificent, splendid, sounded it from mouse to mouse, and everyone was exceedingly satisfied with it. The emperor gave each of the swindlers a cross to wear in the buttonhole as court weavers. All night long before the morning the procession was to take place, the swindlers were busy burning more than 16 wax candles. People could see they had enough to do to get the emperor's new suit ready. They pretended to take the cloth from the loom. They cut in the air with big scissors, they sewed it with needles without thread, and said at last, now the suit is finished. The emperor went thither with this principal cavaliers, and the swindlers lifted up their arms as if holding something, saying, here are the trousers, here the coat, here the mantle, and so forth. 
They are as light as cobweb. One would think one had nothing on, but that is just the peculiarity of the suit. All the courtiers said yes, but they could not see anything. If it might now please your most gracious majesty to undress, we will fit the new suit on before the great glass there, said the swindlers. The emperor undressed entirely, and the swindlers pretended to hand him piece after piece of the new suit. They caught him round the waist and pretended to fasten something round him. It was the train and the emperor twisted and turned before the glass. How handsome it is! How well it fits, they all said. What a design! What colors! It is a splendid suit. The canopy to be borne over your majesty in the procession is waiting, said the grand master of ceremonies. Very well, I am ready, said the emperor. Doesn't it fit well? And he turned round once more before the glass, as if really pretending to look at his splendor. The pages who were to carry the train pretended they were holding up the train, but with their hands in the air, for they would not let anyone to know they could not see anything. So the emperor walked in the procession, under the splendid canopy, and everybody in the streets and the windows said, Dear me, how fine the emperor's new suit is! What a handsome train! How well it fits! Nobody would acknowledge he saw nothing, for then he would have been unfit for his position or very stupid. None of the emperor's suits had been such a success. But he has nothing on, said a little boy. Good heavens, listen to the innocent thing's voice, said the father. And one whispered to the other what the child had said. A little child says he has nothing on, some said. But he has nothing on, all the people exclaimed at last. And the cry made the emperor's marrow creep, for he agreed with them. But he thought he must put a good face upon it till the end. And he kept himself more upright than before. And the pages continued to carry the train, which did not exist. The End <laughs>